a lot of people just don't understand the importance of fresh water daily. Um, when water sits, it gets stagnant, it gets gross, um, gets dirty. Yeah, the bugs fly in it, you know, they're mosquitoes, because what attracts mosquitoes? Water. Um, so we always want fresh water daily. And I, because I've got a lot of people like, well, I, I gave him water yesterday. Well, he needs water every day. Um, and the reason for that too is not only to keep them hydrated, um, especially in our weather here because it gets so hot, um, is, I just totally lost my train of thought. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Um, with, the fresh, with the fresh water is they need to have, they get dehydrated, that's what, they get dehydrated. I mean, that affects their liver, I mean, their kidney. Um, the kidney is what flushes out your system and you need water to flush out your system. It flushes out all the toxins in your body. So keeping yourself hydrated keeps your kidneys working. If you don't have any water, your kidneys are going to shut down. And then that leads to other complications and problems. So health, it can be a health issue. Um, shelter. Shelter is a very important thing and one of the things that we do provide for um, people of the inner city with their dogs. Dog houses, um, you know, hay, stuff like that. But shelters, the importance of shelter is, number one, how it gets so hot here. They need shade. You know, there's a lot of people that, you know, they'll chain them out to a tree. You know, the tree's not enough shade. Especially if you have a dark dog, the sun beats down, it gets really hot. And if they don't have the access to water and all of that, they can overheat and then they have a heat stroke. And then they, usually if a dog has a heat stroke, dogs usually don't survive. Yeah. Um, back to the water real quick. Yeah. Are, are water feeders okay? Like I bought my dog, you know, the big uh, two gallon thing that you flip upside yeah. down. Yeah. Those are, those are just, fr just freshen it daily. That's which is what I always recommend, just freshen, just freshen it daily. Think, what I always tell people is, think about what you'd want. Right. You know, there's, that's how I always think about it. I was like, yeah, there's that bottle of water I bought yesterday that's been sitting on the counter since it's like, I think I want a fresh, some fresh water. You know, I, that's just how I always put it. It's like, if I, my dog's gonna want not much different than what I want, you know, it's, it's, and I know they don't have the choices, but you know, it's, What's good for us is good for them. That's how I basically put it. Um, but shelter-wise, for the summer, they need, the they need something for shade to keep them cool, um, where they can get out of the sun and they can get out of the elements if it's raining. Um, and then in the winter, dogs that live outside, as we've seen on this crazy winter that we've had with the snow and stuff and how cold it got, um, a lot of dogs um, that live in the city, they're not, they don't fed the best food, not always. Um, so they don't get all the calorie intake. Sometimes they're not fed enough. Um, so they're usually leaner. They don't have the big, you know, usually don't see a lot of obese dogs in the inner city. Um, so they don't have that, you know, that extra blubber to help keep them warm. Um, so we get the dog houses and hay so they can kind of little, make a little nest and keep themselves warm, warm in the evening, warm during the day. And of course, out of the elements, the snow, the rain, because there's nothing worse than you see these poor dogs out there and they're just getting beat down with rain. Um, but it's, shelter is such an important, shelter is just as important as food, as water, food and water. Um, routine grooming and nail trims, um, just keeping your dog clean. I mean, we all like to take a shower. It's not that you have to bathe your dog every day, because let me tell you, I don't do that to mine. Um, but just keeping them clean is just good for them. Um, nail trimming. Very important. Um, and the reason I always bring up nail trimming is dogs that live usually at, in, say, in a backyard, grass, sand, soil, dirt, um, which is most backyards, right? Um, they don't have the pavement or whatever. Their nails grow. They have nothing to grind their nails down with. So the nails grow and grow and grow. And then they'll grow into their pads, which are extremely painful. Then they can't walk because it's so painful. Um, Sometimes what I'll recommend to a lot of people, well, my dog won't let me trim his nails. Then I tell them, go take your dog for a walk on the sidewalk or on the pavement where that actually wears their nails down. It's like a natural nail file. So you don't have the problems of them growing into their pads and stuff like that. Um, I mean, I'm guilty of it. I, uh, you know, I've got one, I've got, I've, got, I've got five pit bulls and my youngest one, I mean, talking, it is, it's like the circus. I've got her like this and I'm trying to trim her nails and 
I have to take her to work because it's, it's just, it's a wrestling match that I can't even stand. So um, her nails usually get a little bit longer than everybody else's because she doesn't go to work with me as, as much, but it's just something that's just really important. You see your nails getting, you know, where they're, you can actually see them kind of grab it onto the ground or they're touching like they're walking like this when they're on their slick surface. You know their nails are too, they're too long. Imagine like having an ingrown nail. We've all had like an ingrown nail or something. You know how like the curves are red. It's kind of the same thing, but they're walking on it. Yeah, and then it gets infected. Um, basic training, and you guys know about the training. Yeah. What's the nail should be after training? On a dog's nail, I'll, I'll show you when, when we have one of the dogs out. Dogs, yeah, dogs have quicks. Kind of like, you know, you or I have our nails, and then if we cut them too short, there's that pink, and it hurts like hell when you, like, bang it on something. Dogs have that, but theirs will bleed. Um, so if you look, if, especially if a dog has white nails, clear or white nails, you can see the quick. It's like a little, it's the vessel, it's a blood vessel that's actually in their nail. You, you don't want to cut that. You just want to take the tip off, just the sharp little pointy tip. And you know, it depends on how long the quick is. You know, the more you cut them, the more you can recess the quick back. But just getting that, just, I even say, even if you do it once a month, trim their nails, you'll keep them at a, at a good length. So. Um, Basic training, like you guys all know, because you guys all do the training here, um, is so important. That builds, your bond, that builds a bond with you and your dog, um, which a lot of people don't realize. I mean, I'm sure we've all had a dog, because I have one at my own house right now, that you know, gets a little crazy, a little out of control, and sometimes can be really annoying. Um, and you just don't want to deal with the dog. So what do you do? You put it outside. or you just don't pay attention to it, or I just can't deal with it anymore, I'm getting rid of them. So just simple, the simple training that you guys are doing, you know, the sit, stay, down, you know, be sure they always know their name, um, so that way, say you're, you open the front door and your dog went running out, you want to be, always be sure your dog knows their name. That way when you call him, he's going to come back. Um, because I do run into um, a lot of people that I've talked to, that I, and I'll ask him, I was like, oh, if he's on the street, and I'll be like, oh, he's so cute. You know, what's his name? And they look at me like, I just asked them the craziest question ever. And I'm like, and they're like, well, sometimes we call him Whitey. And I'm like, well, what do you mostly call him? And, hmm, and they just shrug their shoulders. So it's just an importance of, that way your dog has an identity too. But, you know, just if your dog was to get away with you, you could call him and he'll come back. But just basic, tra basic training, that way you build that bond with your dog, um, your dog's enjoyable then, because a dog that's in control is enjoyable, and dogs actually need that control because they don't, they're, because they're pack, you know, they're pack oriented. They always have the pack leader and you're their pack leader. So they look up to you for everything, so by you giving them guidance of the sit, the little commands, because that's all they want to do is please. Um, that's just so important with the training. You know, it, just, it goes a long, 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 long way. Um, dental care. A lot of people don't think about dogs and their teeth. Um, dogs build up tartar on their teeth. Usually it's on the back, and I'm sure, you, you know, guys tonight, look at your dog's teeth, because some dogs have it and some dogs don't. Depends on what they chew on. Um, they'll build up tartar, and it actually looks like gross dirt that's just packed onto their, their teeth. Um, well, fortunately, dogs can't get the toothbrush and brush their own teeth. So every time they eat, um, you know, stuff sticks on, their, sticks on their teeth and the bacteria, and what that tartar is, is bacteria. Um, sticks on their teeth, causes then gum disease, where they get gingivitis, where their, their gums become inflamed. Um, and then from that, that bacteria, once you get that, the gums, the gingivitis going, that bacteria actually gets into the gum area and gets into their bloodstream and then affects the organs and affects the heart. Um, so it can have some long-term effects. So I always tell, recommend people, um, not everyone can brush their teeth, some dogs won't tolerate it, not everyone can take their dog to the, to, the dent, or to the veterinarian to get a dental done, is providing good chew toys. Antlers, Kongs, something from the chew on, and what it does is it breaks that tartar off and it, it's like them brushing their teeth, but they're having a good time doing it by chewing on something. So that's something I like to always express to everyone that, you know, just a lot of people are like, oh, well, I don't like them chewing on it because I don't want to, it's like, it's good for them. It's, it's, it's a positive health benefit. Um, annual vet, vet visits, 
are very important. And the reason not only just to get their vaccines um, and to get their heartworm test, but so the doctor can actually, someone can actually listen to their heart, check their body for little lumps, um, different things that can come up, you know, make sure that um, we always recommend blood work and stuff like that as dogs get older to be sure that, you know, like you or I, they're not, don't have any liver issues, kidney issues. Um, but just an annual visit where an actual doctor can put their hands and just listen to your dog because we can look at the outside of our dog and our dog might look perfectly great, but something might be brewing on the inside and it's always good just to have hands up. Then you can get one step ahead if there was a problem so that it doesn't get worse and you can keep your dog around a lot longer. Um, the monthly heartworm we went over, flea control. Um, you guys do the flea control? You guys do flea control? Use Sentinel. Sentinel? Oh, okay. Um, there's just several different products for flea control. The Sentinel that you guys use is the heartworm preventative and um, the flea control combined, which is fabulous. Um, and then there's other products. There's drops you can put on their back um, that help. There's Frontline, um, Revolution. And what it does, it gets absorbed into the epidural layer of their skin and then spreads throughout their whole body and it puts like a little shield over them. So when a flea bites them, it instantly kills them. It has like a toxic, it's like a little poisonous layer inside their skin that when that, then that flea bites them, they die. And fleas can cause a lot of problems. Fleas can cause them to have, to get very, very anemic because fleas, what they do is they drink their blood. Um, so they, you get a huge flea infestation, you can lower their, their blood cell where the, their gums are white and it makes them really sick. Um, and not only just for the dogs, but Fleas like to bite us too, and they're not fun when you get a flea infestation in your house because um, they're really hard to get rid of. Um, but just for the dog wise, you know, it's the discomfort for the dogs, always itching, scratching, having something, always biting and chewing and crawling on you. Um, you know, it's got to be horrible. It's like having a gazillion mosquito bites and, you know, nothing you can do about it. Um, crate training, you guys know all about the crate training, something I can't push more. Um, dogs like their own little den. You know, just kind of like we have our own, say we have our own recliner at home that we like to sit in, and that's ours. You know, that's our space. Um, or our bedroom, you know, that's our space. Um, dogs don't, you know, don't usually have their, like, their own little space, so their crate, not only for to keep them safe from like when you're not around or you can't watch them, it's always nice for them to be able to go in their own little space and, and den, because they see it as a den. So, it's, a, it's their, what I call their safe area. Um, so a lot of dogs, I've got my dogs that I'll sometimes be like, what are you doing? And especially one of my dogs, he's not um, Gage, he's my old, old man. He's 11 years old and he really hasn't been crated God, since he was little because he just chills on the couch. And I find him all the time in my other dog's crates. And I'm like, what, the door open. But he's like chilling, he's like, oh, I like this space. And, um, but they do, they love it, it's the den effect. They totally love it. So I always recommend people when they get puppies to crate train them. Um, it keeps them safe when you're not watching them because you know they can, they're not chewing on the electrical cord, they're not chewing on your furniture. Um, you know, because when they start doing destructive things, what do people want to do? Get rid of them. Because they're causing, a, you know, we don't, no one likes a burden. No one wants that, anyone, they didn't get the dog to be a hassle. So just by being responsible and taking care of that dog, because the dog doesn't know any different. I mean, they, they don't know the difference from that Kong, you know, to chewing on the chair leg. So, you know, it's just directing your dog to what the positives of what they need to do and what they need to chew on. But keeping them in the crate is where it really keeps them safe when you're, you can't watch them. Um, toys and bedding of their own, kind of covered that. That goes with, you know, they should always have a blanket. Um, in there because everyone wants bedding because I, I know I don't want to lay on my mattress without my sheets and my comforter you know um, it's and they need something soft um, dogs get bed sores if they lay like I see a lot of dogs that you know are outdoor dogs that um, if they live on say a cement or a pavement they don't have a lot of ground soft ground to lay on or grass they get sores on them and they'll get them on their pressure points like on their hips their ankles and you'll see it on some dogs there may be some dogs that you guys have seen in here where they actually it's just pressures where it's just because they lay and they put pressure on that all the time it wears off the skin and they get a sore there 